Here we dedicate our discussion to water-soluble polymers found in cosmetics. You can also find the term water-soluble polymers or WSP, a commonly used abbreviation. These are organic substances, organic materials that have been used for decades for various applications, including cosmetics, industries such as paints, adhesives, detergents, and pharmaceuticals, which, unlike these particles, are defined by the European Commission as water-soluble microplastic. These water-soluble types are polyacrylamide, polyethylene imide, polyethylene glycol, polyvinyl pyrrolidone, and polyvinyl alcohol. So, these are the most typical synthetic polymers that do not meet the criteria for the definition of microplastics. However, their effects have not been studied to such an extent that we can say that they do not have any potential for adverse impact on the environment or our health. This is because minimal information on their concentrations is available, for example, regarding toxicity in the environment and related to the ecotoxicological studies. Therefore, some organizations think that these polymers are also being treated appropriately and are getting involved in this story, as they can also be important. One such organization that has included these water-soluble polymers in its research-oriented activities is the Plastic Soup Foundation, which has been running the Beat the Microbead campaign since 2012. In addition, they have been raising awareness through various promotional activities since 2012. Still, they have also made a list of all microplastic ingredients found in cosmetics and personal care products as part of their website. And if we look back to 2015, when they started compiling this list, there were about 67 different microplastic substances on this list, while today, when they manage it under the European Commission, with various other research institutions, there have been already listed more than 500 microplastic components. Because there are a lot of such ingredients and because they also have different properties, the products were divided into four categories, namely the red category, orange, green and zero categories. Thus, they divided personal care products according to the type of polymer put on the red list the polymers and products that comply with the definition of microplastics of the European Commission. So, these are solid particles with a diameter of less than 5 mm. These are polyethylene, polypropylene, nylon, and polyurethane. On the 4th of February 2022, when I last looked at it, they had as many as 571 substances. This is also because combinations of different polymers often appear in products, and these copolymers, as we call them, also contribute to this higher number. However, they also prepared an orange list, where they placed questionable synthetic polymers or microplastics. These are, for example, water-soluble, liquid polymers and some polymers without carbon. These include poloxamers, well-known polyethylene glycols, and polypropylene glycols, for which there are not enough studies to prove whether they can be put on the red list or maybe even on the green. Then on the green are all those products that do not contain microplastics. This category also includes the products produced by larger companies that do not guarantee that all their products are microplastic-free. Finally, on the zero list, there are those products or those brands that do not use microplastics in their entire product line. Now maybe a few words about polyethylene glycol. You will encounter this kind of polymer material very often in your bathroom. Polyethylene glycol is a thick sticky liquid that consists of the most common form of plastic, polyethylene, in combination with glycol. If we look chemically, we know many types of polyethylene glycols, several derivatives with very diverse molecular weights. These molecular masses are then also written in numbers following the abbreviation. This information is always added. We also have polyethylene glycols in various combinations like PEG 100 stearate. What is the advantage of this polymer? Why is it used in cosmetics? It mainly has appropriate chemical properties and allows for better product intake or absorption through the skin. This is also called the penetration enhancing effect. The lower the molecular weight of these polyethylene glycols, the easier they pass through the skin. If we look at their cosmetics function, microplastics can again act as emollients, emulsifiers, moisturizers, surfactants, solvents, etc. They can also have several features. 
But what are the doubts or questions that arise with polyethylene glycols? It has often been the subject of general discussions about the potential impact on health, but no study has shown significant effects on health and the environment. Toxicological studies may have indicated that in some small concentrations, polyethylene glycol may irritate the skin and possibly trigger an allergic reaction, dermatitis. Therefore, it can be defined as a gentle dermal irritant. Let's look at its effects on the environment. Obtaining polyethylene glycol through ethoxylation is a chemically very aggressive, complex, potentially harmful process because the substance from which polyethylene glycol is synthesized is ethylene oxide. This substance is classified as flammable, toxic, carcinogenic, mutagenic, toxic to reproduction. Although mostly ethylene oxide is not supposed to be found in the final product, it is still somewhat likely that this ingredient remains present. This is one of those exclamations or doubts that the use of polyethylene glycols brings. At the same time, dioxane may also be present. It is a carcinogenic irritant, which can be present as an impurity in the production of polyethylene glycol and can form explosive peroxides with atmospheric air, which is, of course, something you would not want on your skin. And that's the reason it makes sense to treat polyethylene glycol with caution and why the Beat the Microbead campaign put them on the orange list. Some time ago, my students and I made a simple overview of information. We found that the amount of data on the website increased by as many as 3,000 products over three months. So, this is a regularly updated website, and many products are being constantly added. You can see that they are categorized according to their function, such as facial care, body care, oral hygiene, and hygiene, childcare, makeup. If you take some time to research, you may find it easier to identify microplastics in your home. So, I highly recommend it. In February 2022, for example, of the 33,000 products listed on this website, as many as 44% can be placed on the red list according to the organization's criteria. This means that there are still many products on the market that contain microplastics, whether it is polyethylene, polypropylene, or polyurethane. Almost 53% are such products from the orange list, which means that they contain slightly more questionable polymers, such as polyethylene glycol. On the green list, there is somewhere 24% of all products, while the zero group belongs somewhere 13% of products. Don't be fooled that the sum of these percentages isn't 100% as you might expect, but it's not because you can have a product that, in addition to the red listed polymer, may also contain the orange listed polymer. Therefore, all these percentages cannot then be added together to 100%.